So this video is going to be a bit different. I know I've mostly shared art that's related to my writing, but I have been listening to Taylor Swift since I was a teenager, and Speak Now was always one of my absolute favorites of her albums, and I'm so excited for the release of her new version that I wanted to paint a picture based on the gorgeous cover art that she released for it. And since it's also been a while since I've done a serious watercolor painting like this, I thought I would share with you guys how it went. I forgot to hit record when I painted the very first layer of this painting. Sorry about that. I can't say that I started out very happy with this base drawing that I have of Taylor. It just didn't really read to me as looking that much like her. Uh, you see, I tried and failed to do the grid method of drawing, but I just ended up like telling myself, trust the process. Let's see if I can make it look more like her once I start to add color. Something that I think can be really difficult, no matter what medium you're using, is getting a skin tone right whenever you're painting a human being. In the past, I have overmixed the colors. It ends up turning muddy. It never looks right. And I've actually seen another artist that's here on YouTube and also on TikTok. I think his name is Scott Christian Sabah. I, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that right, but he will oftentimes, uh, especially with lighter skin tones, will start with a yellow, which is, to me, it's that's kind of like counterintuitive. It doesn't seem like the right color to use, but then he builds on it with like oranges and reds and browns, and it really starts to look very natural. And I wanted to try that out here, and even with just a few layers on her skin, it is starting to look more like a natural looking skin color, which I really shocked me and was really got me excited to do this process more to look for you know what the underlying tone of someone's skin might be and you know test that out more in the future I think one mistake I've made a lot with watercolors in the past has been really um, getting ahead of myself, making something too dark before it really has time to be layered upon for the colors to get right. I've tried to overcorrect with lighter colors over darker colors, which doesn't always look the best. So with this painting, I was really taking my time and really trying to make sure that I got the undertones right which that was also kind of almost a forensic process, trying to determine what the right undertones for each part of this painting would be. But it was a really good exercise. Drawing and painting hair have always been one of my favorite things to do, and it kind of amazes me how many colors can be in one hair color, how many, when you look really close, how many different tones can be in there. And of course it depends on the light. Somebody who has blonde hair like this, for example, depending on the light, it can look almost brown. It could look golden, um, but it's just, it's very, it's cool to explore that. And some, and especially lighter hair, like blonde hair can almost be a mirror for whatever colors are around it. It really catches the shine, which, I think it's true for most hair colors anyway, so as an artist you have to take into consideration the surroundings of your subject, where you know the lights are going to reflect in that hair. Even things that you might not think of, like the color of their outfit, might reflect in their hair, might change how we perceive the color of their hair. Something I really wanted to avoid with this painting was using the color black if I could at all help it. 
Now, the reference photo for this is very dark. The background is nearly black. It's very dramatic lighting, but it's also very vibrant as well, especially with the bright purple of her dress, this very rich jewel tone purple. Instead, I really wanted to focus on layering the colors and seeing which combinations would get the right amount of darkness but still have that rich depth because even when I was looking at the background of the reference photo there were spots where it was almost completely black but a lot of it was mostly like dark brown and kind of this purplish color so I wanted to be very careful and not go too dark too quickly which is also something that you have to worry about with watercolors in general and something that I really wanted to keep in mind with this picture. So even though the watercolor set that I'm using has three different colors of purple in it, none of them together or on their own were quite the right colors of purple for this particular picture. So I decided to add some of this dark blue as kind of a base for some of the areas where the color is the most intense. And I really like how in the end it adds to that richness of the color. So this color that I'm putting on her hair right now, it looks like brown, but it's actually purple. And I have used purple a lot in shading, especially for this picture, it fits in really well. But once I started adding this purple in, I couldn't believe just how it was starting to bring the painting to life to me. I think it was also when I started adding more shading to her hair where she started to look a lot less like Barbie art that I remember from like the early 90s uh, and more, more like uh, Taylor Swift instead. Something that I did find really challenging was differentiating the edges of this tool on her dress where you can you can tell in the picture that it has edges there but it's very soft and you don't want it to be too sharp but also with watercolor it's hard to get fine lines and details like this especially working as small as I'm working I think I forgot to mention this painting is only like four inches by four inches so I mean I brought this upon myself what can I say Another challenge that comes with watercolor painting is sometimes having to wait for the layers to dry between adding paint, which, you know, is about as boring as watching paint dry, pun intended. Obviously, sometimes this is unavoidable, like the background of this painting. I had to wait and wait and wait and wait before I could add more to it, especially if I wanted to darken it or add a different color on top. But one way that I've gotten around this conundrum is 
moving to a different area of the painting while waiting for that other spot to dry. So I would move on to her hair. That's probably why you see me jumping around so much, you know, moving from her hair to her dress to her face and then back to the background. Um, you know, jumping around, it can, you know, at least make the best use of your time while you're waiting for literal paint to dry. I think it was around this point where her dress, at least on the edges, is starting to resemble the colors of the reference photo that I started to feel kind of like I was going in the right direction, that maybe this wasn't a huge mistake and it would actually end up looking like her. I mean, you'll be the judge of that in the end, but you know, it's, it's nice to hit those milestones in a piece of art where it's like, okay, maybe, maybe, just maybe, this will turn out nicely. Watercolors both frustrate me and amaze me with how much they change when they dry. Because as you can see, when it's really wet, these colors are looking super vibrant and super pigmented. But once they dry, they can start to look a bit more dull. Now granted, this, this might be the paint that I'm using. I think I got it at Michael's years ago. And I can't say that it was the most expensive watercolors that they had available at the time. But, you know, it's, that's another challenge that I discovered, again, with using watercolors for the first time in a while, that you have to kind of anticipate how much they're going to lighten and dry and change as you go. But one plus that I will give watercolors is that they sometimes can be forgiving. Like if you per se, I don't know, add a dark splotch to the face of your portrait, you can take a tiny bit of paper towel like you just watched me do and dab it up before it dries. So I was about 19 or 20 whenever Speak Now first came out, and I remember buying it on iTunes and downloading it to my iPod, and yes, I, I am that old, and yes, I'm dating myself. But I just remember absolutely falling in love with the music of this album. I mean, if you can't tell, fairy tales have kind of been my thing for a very long time. Those are the kind of stories that I like, and the kind of stories that I like to tell. But I just remember the music of this album capturing that feeling that I was searching for in a way that no other music at that time really had, or no, no music that I had found at that time really had. So Speak Now will always have a very special place in my heart because of that.
Speak Now also has my absolute favorite Taylor Swift song of all time on it, which, if you hadn't guessed by now, is Enchanted. And while I wasn't listening to music while I was painting this, I definitely had that song stuck in my head the entire time. I think one of the reasons that I really wanted to paint this picture was because it just, I don't know, it, it felt like the vibe of that song, and I just really, really wanted to paint it. I'm really, really excited to hear the re-record of Speak Now. I've enjoyed the other re-records so much, especially the newer songs, but it's also been so interesting to hear an older version of Taylor Swift sing these songs that I sang and blasted in my car when I was younger, and you know, to hear a maturity in that voice now has been really interesting to experience. So yeah, I can't wait. If you've been following me recently, you'll probably have noticed how much music has been inspiring me lately. Several months ago, I designed characters based off of a random shuffled playlist, and now those characters have grown, and I'm, I'm excited to do stuff with them in the future. You know, whenever I'm not currently trying to write the book that I'm currently writing, and revise the book that I've already released. <laughs> the music has always played such a big role in inspiring me, whether it's a bit with my art or with my stories. You know, it's, it's changed over the years. I could tell you the playlist that I started with whenever I was first writing it, The Slipper Fits, and how it changed over the years and how those songs maybe don't fit the story anymore. But now I've found new songs that do. The same with Project Neona. So music can be such a key to unlocking your creative potential and inspiring you to, you know, stretch your muscles with art and writing and creativity. One thing that I wish I did when I was doing my initial drawing was to actually draw out the curls in definition. It would have made things a whole lot easier on myself than trying to figure out how to make the curls look like curls and look like they're being tossed over her shoulder. But overall, I think it could have been worse with how it ended up, but I'll let you be the judge of that. And here towards the end, that purple that I was using did end up looking very dark and very near to black, which is exactly what I was hoping for. But of course it's not a true black and the colors are still very vibrant and it doesn't detract from the colors in the painting. A lot of these last minute details were just trying to get the hair right, adding the details to her face, obviously. Just trying to get her expression right, which, eh, well, you'll see how it turns out, but could have been better in my opinion.
And at the very end, I went back with a white gel pen to just add a few highlights here and there. And removing the washi tape here was one of my favorite parts of this whole process. It was just very, very satisfying. And now, the final reveal. Overall, I would say I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Like I said, I don't think I got her expression perfectly right, but I'm okay with that. What do you think? Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this from me, then leave me a comment below, maybe with some suggestions of what I should paint next. And thanks to my patrons, Donna and Amber. If you'd like to become a patron, then click the link below. Thanks for watching.